Hey, Vintage Beauties, you know what time it is. That's so odd, I'm in sunny service with a snapback. And if you're hating on me, gon' hate, but if you gon' ride, you better tell me if you with me. I know the devil trying to stop. What's going on about this business? This is the beginning stages of the weigh-in. He is right there signing in. There he goes, my son. He's right there signing in for his weigh-in. This is the first part. So let's see what happens next. So we are sitting here waiting. My son is about to weigh in. I'm not going to show you that because there's other kids over there and they get down to their draws. So we're not going to be doing that on this channel. Um, it's a lengthy process. The fights, the bouts don't start until 1 o'clock and we don't know which bout he is. It's all about getting matched up to a fight. So he doesn't know who he's fighting. We don't know what bout he is. But once we find that out, that's what I'm really going to for. I don't care about none of these other kids. I care about the kids at this gym, though. But they're not going to be all on my channel. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm here for my son. Here go hubby. Babe. Babe. Say hi. <laughs> so, stay tuned, Vintage Beauties. We are going to be live in effect. Can I put a ring behind it? They have two rings. So that makes it go by much quicker when they have two rings. We're going to talk to my son. Oh, they only using one ring? Because this one's small. Um, so they're only using one ring. My bad. We will talk to my son to see how he's feeling and all that good stuff. Okay, Vintage Beauties. Oh, let me give you an update on her. She sheds a lot, okay? She's cute, but she sheds. How much? Say hi. Now, don't you gotta get in this long? Boogie, how you feeling? You ready for this? Say what's up, dude. Oh, you got a camera with you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to. I'm vlogging for my son today, so I wanted to. There you go, always that thing weird. Anyway, let's get back to what I was talking about. This hair does shed a lot, you guys. So I would say just be ready for that. It's super cute, but it sheds a lot. They kind of walk somewhere else. So it sheds a lot, and it's cute. But it sheds. So stay tuned. We'll be back later. While I'm right here, Vintage Beauties, I might as well show you my outfit of the day. These are some vintage red shorts that I thrifted for a dollar. I have them on black. Little, um, what is Liz Claiborne? And then my black and white top that I thrifted for a dollar. Just a way to be casual and cute in the summertime with my shed and wig. Once she sheds too much, I'll just put some curls in her. But yes, this is my outfit. It's super cute. This is how you can just wear your shorts. I don't have, um, yeah, I'm not super small or whatever. So these are still flattering a good length where they're not too short. They're like polyester. The tag is not in them. And they have the, um, the um, what you call that when it stretches in the back? And this is a square top, but I still tucked it in. So, yep. Here's my outfit, guys. My Aldo shades. Real simple. The choker. So they're still inside. I came back to the car because it's boring and I'm bored. So I'm back to the car.
Let me tell y'all, do not sleep on Profusion. Do not sleep on Profusion um, makeup. Like, seriously. Do not sleep on Profusion um, makeup. Their eye palette is so nice, you guys. I would like, like, this is supposed to be a burgundy look. I need to find more. You can find Profusion makeup products at Ross and Marshall's. Marshall has a really great quantity. I don't know where they originally come from, but Ross and Marshall, especially Marshall, Marshall's has a great um, selection. And TJ Maxx has some as well, matter of fact. So try those three retailers, Ross TJ Maxx and Marshalls. They all have Profusion from everything you can think of. I only do their eyeshadows and I love their contour, highlighting contour palette. But yeah, try Profusion. Let's talk about these brows right quick. I love that Ardell brow stuff. It's so much better when you actually, you know, frame them and do all of that instead of just going solo with them. Without really doing a full brow, you're just adding to it. It's so much better when you actually shape the brow and do the whole shebang because um, it's easy. Like, I, I'm a beginner at makeup, and so I thought it'll be harder because I don't have the pencil to guide. However, it is super easy, and it builds as if it's hair. So let me try to zoom in. It builds on the brow like it's hair, and so it gives it this really natural look. And then I just, you know, cleaned them up with some concealer. So the thing about this, that that product, I'm pretty sure, is in stores right now. The thing that Dollar Tree and 99 Cent Store do is when they're introducing a new product, they will put it at these discount retailers to draw in consumers. Because it, I'm going to go, I didn't have time to go Friday, but Monday, I'm going to go, not Monday, Tuesday, because I'm off work Monday. Tuesday, I'm going to go to Dollar Tree and I'm going to get like four of those and just have them on standby. Because I guarantee you, a retailer like 99 cent store in Dollar Tree has certain products for a select, they get a select quantity. And that's to intrigue consumers. So then when they no longer get a shipment of that product, you're going to see it at CVS, Walgreens, Walmart. And it's going to be $5 instead of a dollar. And it's like, how likely are they going to get this, even though it's $5, if they really enjoyed it? And the answer is, we will get it. If it's really a great product, $5 is still super cheap because the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeliner pencil is $25 so getting some fiber eyebrow gel for $5 is still really good and they know they spent a dollar on it yeah they're going to spend four more but they love the product so much that they're going to continue to buy it and so I need to hurry and buy those before they're all gone Good morning, Vintage Beauties, and happy Sunday. I will show you my outfit of the day. It is totally vintage. It's 
a dress that's from the 60s. I'm pretty sure this is a 60s dress. Let me see if I can kind of, I'm going to have my son or, or my daughter, she wants to do it today. Jay is going to show you my outfit today. Um, I just wanted to talk about my son's not so successful fight. Um, it's deeper than losing and winning because um, he has the skills to win and so I was so I was so confused and I was talking to him after his fight and I'm like dude you've been sparring you have these skills that you've been displaying like what's going on is something more because it's not about skill it's not about talent it's something else and he started to share with me it's his mind in his mindset He's defeated before he goes in. And so I said, it makes sense. As a professional, this is what I do. I'm a marriage and family therapist. And so I deal with co clients on a regular basis with negative cognitions, negative thoughts. And your thoughts lead to your behaviors, and those behaviors lead to the consequence or what happens afterwards. And so... This is not a mental health issue. This is a human being issue. And I'll give you the prime example. When I graduated from grad school, I applied for L.A. County. I had the option to apply as a social worker or as a marriage and family therapist intern. I applied as a social worker because my first thought was I have six years to pass the law and ethics exam and the clinical exam and I take bad tests. I am very smart and intelligent and I know my theories, I know the modalities, I know how to apply them, I understand it perfectly. But because I suck at test taking, in my mind, six years is not enough time and I'm going to fail. So I, because my thought was, you're going to fail the test, that you have six years to take, my behavior was do not apply as a marriage and family therapist. Instead, apply as a social worker because it's easy and there's no pressure. You don't have to have a master's degree to be a children's social worker. It's, I'm not talking about a master's in social work or a clinical social worker. I'm talking about the title that LA County gives, which is a children's social worker. You don't have to have a master's degree, so there was no pressure. So my mindset after grad school and entering into the workforce was, I can't pass my exam, so I will not apply for who God has called me to be. Nothing happened. Nothing took place. It all started in my mind, and in my mind, I could not pass. And so because of that, I didn't go after who God called me to be. I didn't go after my purpose and my destiny, which I knew what it was. Woo! Instead, I went, what after, I went after what was safe out of fear. And fear held me back for two years. You guys, I should be licensed right now. And by the way, I, pl I passed my law and ethics exam. I have to finish my hours and I'll be taking my clinical exam hopefully the end of this year or the beginning of next year because it's recommended you study for two months. It's a four hour exam, but I got this. And so my mindset has changed. So that is what I'm talking about. We deal with this on a daily basis and we have to check our children to make sure they're not dealing with the same thing. Because it can be so something so simple as I'm not good enough. And so because I'm not good enough, I'm going to sit and eat lunch by myself every single day. And as a result, I'm going to be sad, lonely, which can lead to depression. These are just examples. I'm not on here doing psychotherapy because that is not okay. I'm just telling you some skills you can do and develop with your children and yourself to make sure that you start debunking these negative schemas, cognitions, thoughts. What do you do? It's a skill called cognitive restructuring. You restructure that thought and replace it with a positive one. So if you have the thought like I did, I can't pass law and ethics, and you replace it with, I'm smart enough to pass. I graduated with straight A's through grad school. I was the valedictorian 
at my college graduation of over four to 5,000 people. You mean to tell me I can't debunk a test? No, I can and I will. That's what you do. You change your thoughts so that they can lead you towards your goals. Negative thoughts usually push you away. Positive thoughts get you into a position to believe and to react. So we have to start believing that we can, speaking that we can, and moving towards what we know we can do. I just had to give that spiel to help others understand that sometimes it has nothing to do with your abilities, what you know you're gifted in, and what you know you can't. Let me pause for a minute, y'all. My makeup is KO. Okay. Look at your girl doing her thing. And this is my color. Look at this color. This is Pareti. Okay, back to our regular, regularly scheduled program. <laughs> it it goes back to believing that you can and doing it. So, with that being said, my son lost his fight in his mind. I am about to pay these fees so that I can be my son's coach of encouragement. Because the devil plays with our mind. That's where he starts. And he knows if he can get us to believe the lies that he plants, he's already winning the battle. But I'm going to be there to intercept and to remind my son of who he is and whose he is. He's not just mine. He's the Lord's. And my son is good. And the devil is playing with him and making him think that he's going to lose before he step in that ring. My son is an amazing fighter. And mark my words, if he chooses boxing as his career, he will be a champion one day. Mark my words. But now we're going to work on him believing in himself. So I'm going to pay these fees so I can get this coaching book so I can be aside his coach. He has a great coach. But he needs his mom to be there and to do what I'm supposed to do. And that's encourage, uplift, and remind him of who he is and what he has to do. Okay, we're done with that. So Jay is going to show you guys my outfit. Um, I hope that rant, it wasn't a rant. It was encouragement. It was to let you know that you can do it. You are worth it. Don't let those thoughts stop you if that thought come replace it and it happens in everyday life let me just give you a simple example that i know some of my sisters can relate to somebody i'm gonna give you my real example <laughs> so y'all know i grew up in the hood and i didn't have that many um interactions with people outside of my race and when i did have interactions they weren't the pleasant they weren't pleasant ones because of stigmas, because of biases, because of prejudices. So I was leaving out of Trader Joe's, right? And I was coming out the parking lot. I was stopped, but I was on my phone texting. And my husband was in the car too. This, this lady, this white lady, start hunking at me. And my automatic thought, the automatic thought that came in my head, oh, she thinks she better than me because I'm black? Oh, she thinks she gonna hunk at me because I'm black? It had nothing to do with the, the phone I was texting on and the fact that I wasn't all the way over so she couldn't get in. My automatic thought was, oh, because I'm black and you white, you think you better than me? And you think I gotta move and make way for you, your majesty? <laughs> so... Me, I had an attitude, and I'm ready to stay there and let her say something. That's my first thought. And the behavior that followed was, oh, I got you, honey. I got you. I'm going to stay right here. Get out the car and do something. Do something. That was my thought. Because you racist. That was my thought. You racist. You think you better than me. And because of that, now my behavior, my now my emotion, I'm pissed off. This is the cognitive triangle. My thought, you racist, my emotion, I'm pissed off, my behavior, I'm going to stay here, get out, and I'm going to donk, donk, donk you. What? Let's just start over. <laughs> <laughs> if my automatic thought would have been, you're texting Shonda and you're in the way, she cannot get in. 
I would have been like, oh, I'm sorry, lady. Let me hurry up. My bad. And I would have drove off. And I would have been okay. So but that, was, that wasn't my automatic thought. Nope. And so my behavior, no, my automatic good. thought led to an emotion that caused my behavior to be a certain way. Change your thought. Somebody mad dogs you? Oh, you got a problem? Oh, you disrespecting me? Is your, your thought is, oh, so you, your automatic thought, oh, you disrespecting me. You're feeling behind that. You done pissed me off. Your behavior, we finna fight. Change your thought. You mad dogging me? You probably had a bad day at work today. I'm going to pray for you. Stay tuned for this outfit of the day and this vlog. This and seemed I like a long know. one. No, Jaden already had. They, oh, you know why they fight? It's not because they support me, y'all. They fighting for it because I give them a dollar. <laughs> this ain't no support. Huh. This a money-making scheme. Oh, this is my job. Look, now he got a job. This is his job. I'm going to let her do it right no. now. Shh. I may need it done later today. You see what I'm talking about? This ain't support. This is not support. This is support. Because if you want your videos to be nice and good, let me record it. This is not support. This is a money-making scheme. My kids is in the money-making business. They like, look, I got you, Mom. We're going to have a schedule. You pay me. And only the short videos are a dollar. Yeah. There's inflation. If, it, if the video is too long that they're recording, they want 2 and $3. Yeah, this is a money-making scheme. I ain't mad at them. Hustle on, children. Hustle on. No, we don't.